Good afternoon, traders. This is Frank Charlie with RJO Futures in Chicago. Coming to you on Friday afternoon, May 25th, with a wrap up in the grain markets. Uh, real quick before I get started on my commentary, I want to point out, make sure everybody's aware, we do have a long holiday weekend. Memorial Day is Monday, and the grain market will be closed until Monday evening. Also, um, for those of you who are not aware, we did start some new trading hours. We have extended uh, Globex trading hours in the grain markets from 5 o'clock in the evening till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, straight through continuous trade. So, um, you know, there's no more interruption, 7.15 Central to 9.30. When the pits open, you can trade straight through. Now, um, this week is a real good example of how weather markets cut both ways. This is a double-edged sword. When I gave my commentary the other day, we were talking about building weather premium into the market. Normally, this time of the year, that's what we see traders are concerned with heat and dry, and they start to add premium, bring the prices higher. What we saw this week was that the weather forecast um, added rain and a little cooler temps uh, into next week's forecast. Now what we need to do is wait and see how that develops. If we don't um, get as much as we thought or we don't get some much needed follow-up, it's not just what we get next week. One week, one weekend of rain or hot and dry doesn't make or break a crop. However, grain markets are very sensitive to these weather markets. So as you see, we went through a big correction Outside markets didn't provide any support. You know, the dollar's been very strong versus the euro. All eyes are on the euro zone and what happens there. Um, also, the fact that, you know, it looks like China's slowing down, the global economy is slowing down. The U.S. alone can't support um, the entire global economy. So, um, outside markets have been weak. Grain markets are down mainly on their own, um, you know, weather markets right now. But all those things need to be considered when you're trading these markets, what's going on all over the world. Now, corn um, early in the week put in a swing high around 644 and a half and got all the way down up against some uh, major support around that 570 area. Now, the question is, again, how the weather develops uh, next week. But this area looks like it should be supported. Um, we could see a bounce from here to market is, is a bit oversold at this point. But again, we're going to keep an eye on the weather in the outside markets. Um, we also yesterday had some disappointing weekly export sales. So, you know, that pressured the market as well. A little concern about demand slowing down. However, keep in mind, um, this crop just got into the ground. It's barely emerged. There's a lot of weather markets ahead of us. And again, the markets are, you know, grains are very sensitive to those uh, changes in the weather. We're also competing with South American crops. Uh, Brazil is on their uh, second crop of corn that's being harvested now. Production seems to be at this point a little better than expected. Uh, soybeans um, have also gone through a downside correction, but that market uh, has a little bit different fundamentals behind it. They're not getting the big acres that corn is getting, and um, there's uh, better demand, at least at this point, for the soybeans. So traders are concerned about the tight supply the fact that there's not a lot of acres being planted. And also, you know, again, this is the beginning of the season. We're gonna have some periods where we're concerned about the hot and dry and prices start to move back up. Um, but soybeans are seeing better demand right now. That's helping support that market a little bit. Uh, in the wheat market, uh, that market's down a little bit this week too, but it's probably been the bit best performer of all three of the big grain markets. Um, in spite of, uh, disappointing weekly export sales yesterday, this market uh, finished up about 19 cents today. And again, you know, we're seeing shrinking um, global stocks. The U.S. Uh, crop is, is uh, about to be harvested. That may pressure the market a little bit, bring these prices down. But at this point, we're getting less um, global pr production than what we thought, shrinking stocks, and the market's a little concerned about that. Um, we've also seen a switch from uh, uh, corn to wheat for feed usage. As the price of uh, wheat goes almost a dollar premium to uh, corn, you'll probably see that change a little bit. I just um, want to remind you there is a lot of time left. The weather markets aren't going away. Uh, these grain markets could be very volatile. You need to make sure that you manage that risk. If you need any help with strategies, please feel free to give me a call. My number is 800-826-4124. You can find me on RJO Futures website. And as always, remember that trading commodity futures does involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for everyone. Thank you.